everyone, welcome, and we're so glad that you're with us this morning. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name's Don, and Jamie and I, we have the honor and privilege of pastoring Highmark Church, and if you're newer, hey, we just want to say welcome home. We are so glad that you're with us today, and uh, we want this to be a place that feels like home. Highmark is a place where you're known, where you're needed, and we're so grateful that you're worshiping with us today. And if you're joining us online, just special shout out to you. And we are so glad that you're with us and a part of the church this morning. Hey, let's be loud and proud, Highmark Church. Let's give it up for all the people online this morning. Come on. We're so glad that you're with us. We're so glad that you're with us. Well, hey, we're continuing week two of a series called Miracles. And man, I love to see God work in people's lives. I love to see God just bring people along on a journey. And I also love when God does something supernatural, something miraculous, something powerful, something that you just step back in life and you're like, only God could have done that. Like only God could have made that happen. And so we're looking in this series at miracles that Jesus did while he was uh, here on earth. We're looking at the principles that apply to our life. We're trying to understand how we can have faith, how we can grow closer to God and, and all that he has for us. And so uh, as we get into this series, I just love it. And like I said uh, uh, earlier in the service, I was able to uh, pl- uh, trained church planters in San Diego this week, so I was traveling a little bit. And you know, let me tell you, when I when they asked me to come and be part of training and uh, planters, church planters in San Diego in November, I thought, man, I couldn't ask for like a greater reprieve from the coming winter of Indiana. But let me tell you, the favor of God was not on me. I got there and it was rainy and cold, and I looked at the weather back here in Indiana, and it was sunny and warm and. And I was like, what is going on here? Like, I'm missing out something on, with the favor of God. I was like, I needed to check my heart or something. But I got, had the opportunity to stay at this hotel. And uh, I was reminded this week of how sometimes things don't go as planned. Sometimes you could get stuck and you struggle a little bit. Uh, this is what happened. I was at the hotel, and our, the hotel had a parking lot that you had to go through a gate, and you had to use your card to let yourself into the parking lot and, and also to get out. And, well, going in, everything was fine. And when I checked in, I was able to pull right into the parking lot. You know, I, my card worked, and I, uh, the, the, the gate lifted up, and I pulled right in. But a little later, when I went to leave, I, I went to the exit gate, and I, and I scanned my card. And, and nothing happened. The gate didn't lift. I was, I was stuck. And I, you know, I suddenly am like, okay, what's going on? Did I, something happen to my card? And so I'm scanning it again. And I'm like, okay, I can't get out of the parking lot. Uh, I'm starting to assess what my options are. I thought, okay, maybe I can back up. But I look in the rearview mirror and there's already someone behind me. They're clearly growing impatient at me. And, uh, and, and so I'm thinking, wow, well, what do I do here? I evaluate the gate and I think maybe I can drive through the gate. I can bust through the gate, but then I have a rental car. I'm not thinking that's a great idea and I'm going to get stuck with a bigger bill. But, you know, I, I, I just, you know, am in this situation where I just felt stuck. Uh, and finally, I realized that on the gate thing, there, there was a call button. And so I, I hit the call button, and I think I'm going to need to explain what is going on here. I think I'm going to have to tell someone the phone is ringing, it, it rings, and, and, and as soon as they pick up, uh, nothing happens. No one responds, but I quickly and instantly, they just buzz the gate, and it lifts open. And in that moment, I realized that, like, I was not the first person that had that problem. And clearly there was something wrong with the gate in that moment. But it got me stuck and it reminded me that, you know, there's sometimes, there's there's things in life we we might get stuck or we might get stalled out with. But just as I called whoever I called on the other end of that phone line and they knew that they needed to open the gate and that there was an issue, I feel like sometimes we forget that God has that type of picture of our life. Like he knows every battle. He knows every struggle. He knows every uh, setback or stall that we're in. And he knows right where we're at. And he knows how to just hit the button to open up the gate. And he can do something miraculous like that in our life. And so we're looking today at uh, the book of Mark. And we're going to look at really kind of how when we face a struggle, 
when we face a setback or we get stuck, we can call upon God and we can have faith in those moments. You see, I think sometimes what we end up doing is we actually stall out or we get stuck and we just go to all of our own options first. We look at all of the scenarios that we should do first and and we evaluate, okay, I could do this or I could change this. And we forget to call upon God. And I think that when we're following Jesus, we have to flip the script on this and we have to realize that God has called us to uh, call upon him to recognize that every, every difficulty or struggle we face, no matter how big or little, that we can meet that with faith, that we can have a, a faith to call upon God and realize that he can answer the call and he knows right what we need. He knows exactly what we need right when we need it. So we're looking this morning at Mark chapter 2, and we're going to look at a miracle, and we're going to break this scripture up in two parts this morning. Uh, and I'm going to just talk about the story of Mark uh, that is in Mark chapter 2, where Jesus heals a paralyzed man. And if you want to follow along, you can always scan the QR code on the seat back of the row in front of you, and uh, just click the uh, Miracles series artwork, and you can go to my notes there, and the scriptures are there. You can take notes, fill in the blanks, you know, and just have a permanent record of today. You know, you're just going to be like, I got it in my email. You can send it to yourself. Um, and so take notes this morning. Maybe God is going to speak things to you. Uh, but as we look at this scripture in Mark chapter 2, we actually see that Jesus is in a city that he based his ministry out of in Capernaum. And it says that Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, and the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there, were, there was no more room even outside the door. Now, what's happening here is that just we're in chapter 2 of Mark, but Jesus has just shown up on the scene. We talked about this last week about how Jesus just drops right into doing amazing and miraculous things and teaching and, and people are uh, caught by his ministry and, and there's, they're, they're seeing that there's something different about what he is doing. He's not just any old prophet. And so it's natural that now he's back in Capernaum and he's like, man, like, look, like everyone, I'm sure word was spreading that, hey, Jesus is back in town. And so everyone's cramming back into the house. They're packed inside the house, and, and they just want to hear him teach. They just want to hear a little bit more. And so it continues on. It says, while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. And they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Now let me pause a minute, because if you're thinking of this roof like your roof at home, it's not the same, okay? They didn't have to rip up shingles. They didn't have to, you know, beat through the wood, plywood decking. No, they actually, the roofs would have been made out of, uh, you know, organic materials. They would have been compacted branches and clay even. And so to dig and open up a hole was probably a little easier than what you're thinking of someone kind of going to your house here in our area and, you know, you know, digging a hole and you're like, yeah, they dig through the hole. They just caused a problem and they're not even in the house because you got an attic and you got all that fluffy insulation and that's going to be itchy. Okay. Um, this is where, this is how my mind thinks guys. So it continues. It says, then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. And it's, see this, Jesus sees their faith. And Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Okay, so let me pause the story right here because the response that Jesus has is to their faith. And what I want to talk to you this morning about is about living life full of faith and living life uh, depending on your faith in Jesus. And I think like when I read this story, I realize that this man, he's sitting on a mat. The mat was, uh, was his livelihood. He's paralyzed. He can't walk on his own. He can't move. In reality, probably what was happening day in and day out is he was depending on other people to put him in a place and position him on his mat somewhere on the street, maybe even leading into the temple, to beg and ask for handouts and ask for people to support him. He could not... Do, any, do it on his own. But this mat represents how he's hurting and how he's broken. 
But I love how he's picked up on the map by his friends or these, these four guys that come along. And he's brought in, and they, they bring him in front of Jesus. And I, I, I want you to understand this. Like, you may not, being, may not be facing the same type of physical ailments like this man. We're, we're maybe more capable or able. But let me tell you, the mat in this story is a lot bigger than just the paralyzed. I think a lot of times we have mats in our life that, that have us stuck right where we're at. And it might be not just a physical ailment, but it could be a, a, a spiritual thing that's going on in our life. It could be emotional and a relational thing that has us stuck on the mat, that we're stalled out and that we're paralyzed. But here, he's brought before Jesus, and Jesus responds to their faith just to get them in front of Jesus. I'm, I'm blown away by this. And some of you might be stuck on a mat today. Maybe your mat is that you have a struggling marriage. Maybe your mat is that you've experienced betrayal and you have unforgiveness and even bitterness taking root in your heart. Maybe your mat is a sickness, though, that the doctors just don't have the answers for. or You don't have the clarity on how to get healthy. Maybe your mat is an addiction that's stealing away your life and breaking relationships around you. Maybe your mat is past hurts and, and things that uh, are holding you back because of things that other people have done to you. Maybe your mat is fear and worry, and it's that fear and worry has gripped you so much, it's maybe causing anxiety. It's maybe, it's maybe causing you to just get stuck in life. Maybe your mat is a lack of finances. But you know what? We got a battle to get our mats in front of Jesus. That's what the scripture tells us and shows us, is that this man, even though he was paralyzed, even though he was facing this tremendous struggle and probably felt stuck. He had a battle in front of him, but he knew that he, and he had heard the reports of Jesus. He had heard the reports of the miraculous things he could, could, uh, Jesus could do. And he just is saying to his friends, hey, I got to get in front of Jesus. I got to get in front. Would you do whatever you can? And I think that they probably carried him, you know, to the house and and someone was like, well, it's packed out. What do we do now? And someone said they were persistent and like, we have to get him up in, maybe if we get him through the roof and we lower him down, then, then like we just got to get him in front of Jesus. And I think that principle is so powerful that we realize that we're going to face battles in life, but the best thing that we can do is just get every battle in front of Jesus. And when we get every battle in front of Jesus, we realize that blessing is on the other side of the battle. So when we get it in front of him, we're just saying, listen, I can't do anything about it. My, my, my first reaction isn't to, I'm going to try this or do this, and I'm going to work on my own power. And, and God gives us a sound mind, and he gives us the ability to make decisions. And, and I'm not telling you to stop doing that, but I am telling you to, to ask God for the breakthrough. I'm asking uh, that we ask God to guide us every step of the way, and that we can have faith in the midst of the battle. You see, we just have to get in front of Jesus. So the battle you're facing is an opportunity for your faith to actually rise up. So I think instead of us looking at the battle as dreadful and difficult, I think when we focus our eyes on Jesus, we say, I'm going to get this in front of Jesus, then it actually shifts our perspective a little bit and we start to see what's possible. We start to see the setup for the miracle. We start to live with this persistence of like, I just got to be in the presence of Jesus. And then faith, and then that's, that's the place where faith rises up. And that faith means that regardless of the circumstances, I know that God is able to work it out. Faith means that you understand that through every battle, God has a purpose. And if you don't bring it to God, it, it's actually like you saying, hey, maybe God doesn't care. Or you, you, it's like you're saying, God doesn't have the power to overcome this. Or God can't do anything about this. And those two things are contrary to everything we read about in Scripture. And everything we know about God is that he does care. And he can bring the breakthrough. And he can bring the blessing on the other side of the battle. We should just have faith. Look at 1 John 
5.4, it says that every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. You see, it's a faith that we have that sustains us, that we're trusting in God, not ourselves. We're, we're having faith. This paralyzed man, he, was, he had to convince his friends to bring him and put him and get him in front of Jesus. Think about that. Like, you know, maybe these guys helped him on a daily basis and they normally kind of just said, okay, we'll take you from your house and we'll put you here on the street to beg. But he had to convince them like, hey, today's got to be different. I need you to go all in with me. I need you to take me a little bit further. I need you to take me a different direction. And he actually had to like convince them. And he had friends that were willing to say, okay, I'll carry the mat. I'll carry you with you because we, we understand or we see the victory that that is in Jesus and just getting in front of Jesus. Let me tell you, friends like that, that's why we do life groups here at Highmark. That's why we, we say being in community is so important here at Highmark because it's when you're in community like that that when you face a struggle and you face a challenge that you have friends that are going to help you carry your mat to get in front of Jesus. So if you're not in community, you're actually carrying that alone. But you got to have people around you that are going to be willing to say, hey, I'll pick up a little bit. You're going through something in a week. You get, you're facing a challenge at work. Something's going on in your family, a sickness or illness that you can, you, you can get in the text thread and, and you can text someone and say, hey, like I, I, I need prayer this week or I don't know what to do in this situation. And you can have this encouragement and community that actually is people helping you get your problems, get your difficulties in front of of Jesus. So that's the importance of just being in community. I also kind of think about the friends in a different way. I think about this as I think there's probably people in our lives that we need to always be willing to grab the mat and carry them to Jesus. I think at Highmark, we're always saying, hey, we're here to make a difference in our community. We're here to see uh, people's lives change. We're, we're here to help people find and follow Jesus. And so if we're all about helping people find and follow Jesus, then I think the people that God's placed in our lives, we can be willing to grab a part of their mat and carry them to Jesus. Sometimes that's just inviting them to church. Sometimes it's just speaking God's truth to them. Sometimes it's praying for them. Sometimes it's encouragement. But just like these friends, we have to be willing as followers of Jesus say, hey, we know what the solution is. Let's go. We'll take you there. We'll, we'll, we'll guide you every step of the way. We're willing to do the work. And I love, though, in this story where it ends in that section of Scripture in Mark is that Jesus is actually addressing the spiritual need first because he gets lowered in front of uh, the, the, the paralyzed man gets lowered in front of Jesus and what happens is Jesus says, he sees their faith and he responds. He says, your sins are forgiven. And I love that God, he cares about the spiritual state as much as every uh, physical and difficulty and challenge we go through. He's here because he cares about what's going on in your heart. So it doesn't matter how we get to Jesus. It doesn't matter what condition we get to Jesus. It's just the fact that we get in the presence of Jesus. And that's what God wants us to do. When we get in front of Jesus, things happen supernaturally. Things happen when we carry our mat and get it in front of Jesus. Let's continue the story in Mark chapter 2. The verse 6, it picks up and says, But some of the teachers of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? You know what? I was reading this story this week. And I was like thinking of these religious people and leaders. And I was just like, they just don't get it. They just don't understand. It's Jesus. But then that question hit me. The Holy Spirit hit me with that question. Is like, don't we question God so much in our hearts? Just in our actions and the way that we maybe don't have faith in situations or maybe we take the reins ourselves, 
basically, aren't we doing that? Aren't we questioning God in our hearts? Then he continues, he says, it's easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Or, or is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? And so I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth. Jesus, he has the authority. He says to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and he said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, he grabbed his mat, and he walked through the, the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. And there we get, the, we get the miracle. We see the picture right there of what God is doing. And he reminds us that, listen, even when we question it in our hearts, he has the ultimate authority. And he can, in a moment, change the situation. He can lift the burden. He can move us forward. And we can instantly be healed just like this paralyzed man. So that's why we can have this type of faith every time we face a setback or we stall out. It's because God is able and capable of meeting both our spiritual needs, our physical needs, our emotional needs, all of the needs, God can meet them with his power and he can give us the breakthrough. So we have to remember we get in front of Jesus because burdens are broken when we're when they're brought to Jesus. Burdens are broken. Like, it's a breakthrough. It's done. Broken means that, hey, it's not something that you're going to deal with again. But, again, he's, he's healed. And there, there's, a, there's a healing that happens in our life. And I love that in this scripture, we see that Jesus, as he addresses the spiritual, he actually is addressing what all of us deal with is the burden of sin. That we all face the struggle in life of, of being imperfect and sinful people. But he, he says, listen, Come to me and, and I will bring that forgiveness. That's the salvation every one of us can grab a hold of. And that's the greatest miracle that we can all live in is the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. That we are made right with God. That even though we, we do things wrong and, and, and we've, we've, we've failed at times, that we can, we can live in the grace of Jesus and we can hear the words, your sins are forgiven. See, sin actually dragged us away from God's design and God's purpose. But when we get in front of Jesus, those burdens are broken forever. Psalms 103.3 reminds us of this. He forgives all my sins and heals all my disease. Think about it. Jesus, he's here to bring healing, to do a miracle. We just have to get it ourselves. We have the faith to bring it before Jesus. Sometimes your burdens are actually heavy, though. Sometimes your burdens are weighing you down a little bit. Sometimes your burdens distract you from the fact that God has a breakthrough for you and that he can bring this type of healing. And I love that in Scripture we're reminded over and over that we don't have to do this alone. And the beauty of the church is that we have reinforcements. We have reinforcements to uh, call upon help in our times of need. We, have, we can call upon people to help us. James chapter 5, one of my favorite scriptures. And actually, it, it, I'll, let me, it's actually why we, every Sunday at Highmark Church, we end our service with an opportunity to, to uh, pray together and have our prayer teams. But this is what James 5 says. It says, if any of you are sick, you should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. Right there, we get the reminder that, listen, we can come to other people. We can be prayed over. And at Highmark, we have elders. We have people that are mature in their faith that are there to pray with you at the end of our service. Everyone else could be leaving. But if you got something you need prayer for, I challenge you. I encourage you. Come forward because James reminds us that a prayer set in faith can bring the healing that we need. And that's exactly why we'll always be a church that is praying for people. We're praying for breakthrough. We're believing that God has more for you. See, this mat in this story represents this man's brokenness. But I want you to notice that Jesus 
has him carry the mat out. What Jesus said to him was pick up the mat and walk out. I thought that was interesting. I thought it was interesting that he didn't just say, hey, leave the mat behind. But I think him carrying the mat became part of the testimony. Because the mat would have been recognized. And the man with the mat and the, man, the mat with the man, they, they would have been, people would have recognized him. And he walks out and people are saying, look at what God did. Look at the miracle that he did. And it became a testimony of the power and the miracle that Jesus did in his life. So you might have a mat in your life and you're just like, I want to get rid of this. I want to, I want to drop it and leave it behind. And God's saying, listen, I'm going to do a miracle in your life, but I want you to carry it because it's going to be part of your ministry and your testimony at the power of what God can do in someone's life. So if you walk through something and you've experienced the healing of God, you've experienced the power of God in that way, let me tell you, God has a purpose for that. So you don't have to carry that mat with shame. You carry that mat with pride. And you carry that mat because it's going to help someone else with their mat. And the things that you've walked through and the power you've seen God work in your own life is going to bring a breakthrough. See, when we bring our mat to Jesus, it sets up the miracle. This is what I want to get. I just want this to stick with you this morning. All we have to do is just keep bringing the mat before Jesus. We have to keep bringing it before him, and it actually sets up the miracle. Jesus will do the rest. We have to carry our mat to Jesus. It's what he calls us to do. It's what he, he says, when you bring it to me, everything changes. But that requires us to have faith and trust in him. It requires us to lean into the unknown sometimes and trust that God has it all under control. I want to pray this morning that God would help us all to live in those unknown seasons and unknown times. He would allow those moments when the mat creeps in or the difficulty challenges us or we stall out or we feel stuck, that we wouldn't pull back from God, but we would lean into his presence and his power. And that we would bring that thing, that difficulty, that challenge, we would bring it to God and say, I just got to get this in front of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus that changes everything. And let me tell you, at Highmark, we believe God can do miracles. We don't think that what we read in scripture is for back in the day because we've seen God do it already in our church. We've seen God do miracles, and so we believe and we, we stand in faith saying, God, you can do it. And we walk that road with one another, full of faith that, God, you are all powerful. Would you bow your heads this morning? And as we